All right, this is another video in our brief series on DVOM usage or digital volt ohm meter usage. And the meter that I have here in front of me now is the is a is a PDI 895. Uh, PDI is a, a company that sells some electrical test equipment, and we use these meters quite a bit here in the automotive technology department at Western Wyoming Community College because they're they're fairly inexpensive but they they're actually packed with quite a few features and and this particular meter is automotive specific so it's got some features that are specific to automotive technology or diagnosing the automobile and so I want to talk about some of these things today so the first function if we we flip on our switch is for volts so this would be our voltmeter and if you look at the the symbols under volts, you can see in this function we measure DC, that little symbol there with the lines, that's the symbol for DC, and then AC as well with that AC sine wave. So with our leads plugged into volts and our COM ports, we can measure DC volts with this meter. Okay, very simple, uh, no big deal to, uh, to do that, right? The next function is our ohm meter. Now our ohm meter is used for testing continuity of wires or testing resistance of components. We don't check resistance of wires with an ohm meter. Okay? Checking resistance of wires with an ohm meter does not work because it does not take into account how much current has to flow through that wire. All it's really looking at is is there continuity for the tiny little bit of current that's, that this meter is going to send out to through its leads through the circuiture testing so we don't test the resistance of wires with an ohm meter we only do that by if you want to test resistance of wires then you do a voltage drop test and we've got videos on voltage drop testing that kind of show you how to do that and explain that but anyway let's jump all the way back over to here these are our amperage measurement selections. So we can measure up to 10 amps, which is pretty typical of any, any DVOM. Here's our milliamp scale, and then there's a microamp scale. Uh, very rarely would you use microamps. Sometimes you use milliamps. Uh, but the 10 amp scale, that's, that's going to be the one you most commonly use. Anytime you're measuring amperage, start out on the 10 amp scale. Now, you hopefully remember, or if you don't, um, hopefully from now on you will remember that when you are measuring amperage your black lead is in the COM port but this port over here that's for measuring voltage and for use with the ohm meter um, will not work for you so you have to pull the red lead out of here and put it in the 10 amp slot always start out on the 10 amp scale and see if that will give you the reading that you want now if you are reading something less than 400 milliamps you can use this port and you can turn your mode selector switch to the milliamp scale. But it has to be under 400 milliamps. Now there's a thousand milliamps in one amp, so we're talking about 0.4 amps, which is a small amount. When you're measuring current that small, how many places you have to the right of the decimal becomes important. When you're measuring more than that, it doesn't matter. If you've got, you know, one, two, th you know, one or two is plenty if you're measuring a high amount of current. By high amount of current, I mean an amp to 10 amps. If you are on the wrong scale, so if you start out on the milliamp scale, but that circuit is drawing two amps, the two amps is gonna flow through your meter. And as it flows through the meter, it is going to blow the fuse that is, in, that is behind this port because it is fused for a maximum of 400 milliamps. So never ever forget to switch your leads when you are measuring amperage. We will definitely address that in another video. So for right now, um, just remember, when you're measuring amps, you always have to move your leads from the, the voltage port over to one of the amperage ports, okay? Now, some of the other features on here. These are things that, uh, would be, that are good for an automotive technician to be able to do. This one here is measures hertz and hertz is cycles per second. So if you are measuring, oh, let's say you want to look at the output of a mass airflow sensor that's digital. 
A, ma a digital mass airflow sensor produces a frequency signal. If that frequency is off, then the computer won't know how much air is coming into the engine. So measuring hertz from that, um, from that sensor at idle and then say you know 2500 RPMs, there's a specification for it. Measuring that output in hertz is a very useful thing. Um, this next selection is duty cycle. Duty cycle is good. Um, this is uh, something that you would use to check the duty cycle of a solenoid. So if you wanted to see the duty cycle of something like um, oh, an EGR solenoid or even a fuel injector, then this is how you would measure that. Now, just as a reminder, duty cycle is on time expressed as a percentage of total cycle time. Okay, duty cycle is on time expressed as a percentage of total cycle time. So, 50% duty cycle means that solenoid is on half the time and off half the time. This is where you can measure that. This one here is for measuring RPMs, and which is, of course, revolutions per minute. There is a special set of leads that plug in down here that uh, you can clamp onto a spark plug wire, and you can use this as a tack, a tachometer. All right, very handy, um, very, uh, very good to be able to, to measure um, engine speed. Um, you can also toggle back and forth between one, say, one trigger per uh, uh, revolution or, or two triggers per revolution. So if this was like a waste spark system, you could have, you'd put it on the, on the two. If it's um, just a regular ignition system, then you would, you would toggle to the one. Um, and this is, this is RPMs times 10, um, so there might be times when you would use that one as well. Um, some, of these, some of these things are not as useful as they used to be. Tachometer is kind of like that. Way over here, though, we have, we have something else. This is the dwell section. Okay, this, is def this part's definitely not as useful as it used to be. Back in the day when cars had points, having a dwell meter was really very handy because you could use it to, to set your points. Dwell is, um, of course, the on time of the, the primary windings in the ignition coil. So your ignition coil primary winding on time is dwell. So uh, dwell for four cylinder, five cylinder, six cylinder, seven cylinder, or not sorry, six cylinder, eight cylinder. Never heard of a seven cylinder. There may be one out there something really old and weird but eight cylinder depending on how many cylinders the car has you know you would you would select the one that that the select the setting that you would would want to to measure dwell now you can use this for other things besides uh, setting up points okay this this is also handy for vehicles that uh, if you want to see if there's any dwell on the coil maybe that you have a no spark situation so the car won't start because you don't have a spark. Well, you want to see if your ignition control module or if the computer is even pulsing the coil. You can measure that with the, the dwell meter. So still useful. Not as useful as it used to be, but still, still useful. Now down here we have our thermometer settings. And this is for the, the thermocouple that, that plugs into here. Um, depending on how much voltage we are, are looking at reading, we will pick the, the scale here. So if it's something up to 400 volts, we'd select that. If it's something up to 1,832, then we'd select that. And then we have the same thing for, for Celsius over here. So if we want to read temperature uh, temperatures in Celsius. But uh, those, are, those are basically the features of the PDI 895 meter, automotive specific. So uh, something that uh, students here in the program will practice with so they will get a chance to to know how this thing works.